Hello, my name is David Revoix and in this video I want to show you how to use the Colorize Mask of Krita. This feature is not new, it's a feature of Krita 4.0 that appeared last year and this feature is a method to do some automatic colorization. And by saying that, I, I'm not saying that Krita does everything and it's magical, no. I have an example on the screen. Uh, you have to input uh, a map of stroke of painting over your line art and then Krita will know where you want the color to propagate and fill all the areas. So this video will be in three parts. The first part will be a quick demonstration. The second part will be why I'm using it now in production after one year. Mm -hmm. And the third part will be advanced tips that I found on the way of using it and uh, yes that's all let's start if you want to quickly get started with the colorize mask feature you need a line art that's a bit obvious and i made this one over this sketch this morning and you need to right click on your line art at first go to add and then add a colorize mask. It will create a new layer under your inking that is a colorize mask. And you can see it's linked, it's like a children layer. And then you go to the toolbar here on the side and you select this tool. It's a little paintbrush with dotted circle around it. You click on it and then it will turn your line art into a sort of preview mode. It's a preview mode to ease the, the preview of the stroke you, you will see later. Then, when you have this tool and this colorize mask selected, we will pick a brush. So I will pick a convenient one and I will explain later this one on the pixel art. It's a part of the default set. And then I'm ready to color my little stroke uh, so Krita know where I want to fill what color. So you can pick color, draw some cross, circle, dot, Krita understand everywhere, even long spaghetti, that's my favorite one. And you can press undo. If you want to undo, uh, you can also, if you get another color, press control to pick and sample a previous color. Uh, you can also press E uh, for the eraser and erase uh, a marker or just part of it. It will work also. So because this next step involves a bit of manual work, I will just launch a time lapse and uh, probably uh, remove the webcam so you can't see my face doing uh, 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 very quickly. So see you in five minutes. So once the work is done, I just have to press the little wheel on the colorize mask. It's here on the corner and this will tell Krita that I want a rendering. So you can see the progress bar here. And then Krita proposed me a rendering. So I am still in interactive mode and Krita proposed the color under the stroke so I can see the stroke and the color, but if I want to see the rendering, I have to click on this little pencil here on the layer. And then I can see the result. So of course, there is a lot of little issues. 
and these little issues here, like here on the shirt, like here on the leaf, like uh, the eyes, I didn't put a white color, but all of this is normal because if I made some better marker, maybe Krita could have guessed better. So I will do a post fix pass. So I clicking this pencil again. So now we are back into our interactive mode. And then I will zoom in to have some bit of more precision. And I will select with the color and color click to pick the color. And then I will do some little cleaning here and there. So I add this part. I had what are, what are the problem? I'm sure you, you can see a lot of them on your screen. But recording at the same time, it's a bit more difficult. This tiny one. Oh yes, I remember on the skin here and here. And of course, I forgot about the high bro. And that's probably okay for now. So I'm clicking on the little wheel again to call another rendering now. So Krita is working in the background and I'm clicking the little pen to see the preview. So now everything is much, much better. You can see that there is a little refresh issue. So this you can press the hide layer the little eyes and press it again if you have this type of issue it's just a refreshing issue it's not a big deal and now i want all around my artwork a transparent color so because it's the background i, I don't want anything so for doing this i will go back to my interactive mode and i will pick a color like this blue and I will tell Krita that all this part, I don't want it. So for Krita to understand that this blue needs to be now the transparent color, I need to go to my tool option. So tool option by default is a docker like that on Krita. And mine is on the top toolbar because there is an option in the settings to get the tool option here. So if I have the color was mask, you need to have this tool here. Uh, I'm switching to mousse because the precision is not good, but the colorized mask editing tool, if you have this uh, tool selected, then the tool option will display all your color you previously uh, put on the canvas. And you have this blue color and you can tell this one, I want it to be transparent. As soon as you click on that, Krita will stroke in red this color and when you will press a rendering you will see Krita will replace this color by purely transparent and then when I press the little pencil here I have the blue color that disappear in a transparent color so I could continue like that and refine add some more little detail on my colorist mask and until Krita really feel perfectly the mask. But for the little details, at this point, I prefer to continue to do them manually. So I will transform the colorized mask with a right click convert into a paint layer. And then I have here now a simple paint layer. It's a layer where I can normally paint, so I'm taking the freehand brush tool. I keep the same preset and then I just paint this area with the color where I want to fix. And for this little detail, it's always way faster. And I will do the same for fixing the eyes because I can't expect Krita to really recognize where the limit for the eyeball was because it wasn't on the on the line art so i'm doing this quick fix while recording a 
a little bit of white on the eyes. I'm checking if I'm not doing something wrong with the M key to see in the mirror. But it looks okay. For sure I could do better, but for a demonstration it's not bad. And I will fix also the... I don't know how to call it. Sweatshirt, maybe a shirt. And I had some issues here also. And here, maybe there. Maybe this part was transparent and I forgot to tell about it. But that's okay. You can do some many little post fix this way. I'm still trying to look at what I'm doing. And that looks okay. So I'm doing a little chapter about why this is important into production to use this type of method because if you use a brush under your line art, um, you have some possibility to fill the area but also to go over the line. And if you use the fill tool, you can have some problem too. And with this method, you can have way cleaner results. Just that. And this is a picture extracted from one of my articles because uh, I have to admit I am really interested into this topic, automatic colorization. Uh, this first blog post was published in uh, 2014 and I started to use the automatic colorization on the episode 6 of Pepper and Carrot. You can see it on the making of on the blog too. So I'm using the gimmick with the little dot marker at this moment. And uh, of course, if you are on the channel, you probably know the previous video with gimmick and this one for the first one. And also this method with the smart coloring tool. So I was really happy when the feature reached uh, inside Krita without uh, the need to go to another interface with the possibility to save during the process so you can make even a very complex map and save it. So when you do it on a comic, it looks a bit like that. So <laughs> this is a screenshot of a page because I, I didn't save it, yet, but it made a pretty good result. But I'm, I didn't continue it on episode 28 with the colorized mask because I wasn't really confident with my line art. I had a lot of problem with the facial expression and wasn't really happy with that. I had to do a lot of post fix bit before the release. So here is uh, experimentation, experimentation I made last, last year. So you can see that I have eye on this tool since a long period. And this is a test I made uh, before using it. And I wasn't really happy with the result at this time. And when I did the same, uh, redo the same artwork with only painting, I was way more happy with the result with painting. But the reason wasn't really the colorize mode, but more about my line art. So I learned to make a line art a bit more sketchy, a bit more pencil-led. That's why you could see uh, some artwork in my recent one. Uh, I have, for example, this type of artwork now. I will remove the sketch where the line are a bit more sketchy. I'm using something less clean that makes some line with uh, a little bit of texture. It, it, it really give uh, this little extra thing that I was looking for, but it took me time to, to make a lot of tests and to realize that. So my first tip when using the Colorize Mask feature is to use an aliased brush. So in the demonstration, I took the pixel art brush. 
And that reason is because if I pick another brush, for example, this brush roller here, and I'm picking a blue color and launch the rendering, you will see at first there is no problem. The colorized mask will understand what I said and fill all this part with blue. But as soon as you pick another color and have some collision of transparency, you will start to get into little problem. It's not big problem. So let's do a rendering and see what happens. So I will turn the transparency and, and, and you will see that now we have this shape. So Krita understood that we pick only two colors. We don't want the violet here, but we have some not really clean area and that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the big problem will happen when you will want to sample this color now for this area and you want to come back to it to this area and because this color now have a little texture and are each over it will be very hard to pick back the good color you had so by selecting a brush like the pixel art one i'm doing undo you avoid this thing because if you have some red color and some blue color colliding each time you color pick it will be or one color or the other you will not get uh, in between colors between the two and sometimes in little area this does count a lot and especially on comic page where there is a lot of tiny area and a lot of characters so my second tips is when you apply the colorized mask into and convert it into a paint layer just keep it uh, keep detailing it so you, you see for the eyes with a pixel brush and that's because if I turn off the ink layer you will see that all this aliasing will make the replacement of color very easy and Krita have powerful tool for that so for example if I pick now the paint the fill box, uh, I don't know, fill tool. If I pick it and I want this color to change, I can just take the color, click on it, and it will be easy to replace it. And if I turn off, you see that all the color were affected. If I add some aliasing, so some this little transition and some not pure color, I would get some issue with that. And this field tool is very really powerful in Krita because you can also play on the opacity. So for example, get 25% opacity of the field tool and pick a very strong color and just ask to influence it by 25% th this color. So you, you can sort of do the mixing of your color to get uh, this leaf a little bit yellowish the hair too for example and the eye a bit more blue and the skin just a tiny bit more pink etc etc so i really like to just adjust the color later and don't really mind about uh, getting the perfect color during the colorized mask process but Getting this type of aliasing sometime does this under the colorize because you have sometimes transparent line art as I do here and it's not really looking beautiful. So my third tip would be to when you are done with the editing, you just apply on the top of your colorize area just a slightly tiny Gaussian blur. So I, I propose a two pixel anti alias one. So you just set the Gaussian blur to two pixel and it will smooth all this uh, aliasing and you will get a sort of anti aliasing around your, your shape now. 
So you don't have this big step, this big aliasing under your line art. And now you are ready for shading. So that's all for the tips. And I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, I will continue this tutorial maybe next week, maybe in two weeks. It depends the time I have on the production of pepper and carrot. Uh, and I will continue it with a, a shading tutorial. So. Um, you probably saw on the previous video, I made the shading of the character with a single layer and uh, I will show you how I use it and what we can do about that. So if you'd like it, uh, you know what to do with the YouTube, etc. And uh, also this video will be available on Peertube. That's all. Thank you for watching and thank you for your comments as usual. Bye bye.